Good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everyone. My name is Louis Modell and I am Vice President of Sales heading up the Smart Card Reader and OEM business for Identiv. As of this October, I've been with Identiv for 29 years and I can tell you I've certainly seen the industry change over time. And I'm here today to discuss the critical path forward for strong remote authentication. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Identiv. We're a global provider of physical and logical security, and we provide hardware and software in five main areas, physical access, video and data analytics, identity devices, which include smart cards and smart card readers and tokens, credentials, and we are one of the largest RFID NFC manufacturer of inlays in the world. So let's get into the presentation and talk a little bit about the challenges facing IT leaders today. You know, this pandemic era has really changed the landscape for cybersecurity for the foreseeable future. You know, telecommuting, now called the remote workforce, has seen this exponential growth in 2020. And along with this growth, there has been a significant increase in the number of cybersecurity threats challenging all aspects of the organization. And to make matters worse, these threats are drastically increasing as criminals look to take advantage of the disruption you know, caused by the virus. And what have they done? They've escalated their efforts to gain access to all of this sensitive corporate information. Now, in order to facilitate productivity and connectivity growth within all aspects of the business, IT leaders are faced with this incredible daunting task of providing secure access to business applications without sacrificing scalability and the user experience. And we'll talk a little bit more about the user experience because this plays a really critical role in strong authentication. So assessing the current landscape, um, you know, keeping businesses operating requires addressing security challenges that do support remote workers. Suddenly, many of the employees are accessing sensitive company data while connected to their home networks on both company devices, and you guessed it, on personal devices. We know that a little bit over 50% of the people use the same password for work and personal accounts. <laughs> I know this, I'm, I'm a little guilty of this in certain instances myself. Um, while it is necessary to ensure that remote workers stay connected to the resources that they need, IT leaders must ask themselves a really big question. Are the current security measures in place enough to ensure that only the right people have access to the business resources and data that they need? Now, in order to address these issues, many organizations did expand their dependency on username and password. I mean, this was the easiest thing for them. You know, what did it do though? It made them extremely susceptible to account takeover and data breaches. You know, while it is true passwords do add a layer of security protecting data, passwords still remain responsible for 80% of the data related breaches. But before we can take a look at technology solutions that help secure the remote workforce, we have to review a major factor that has always challenged and quite frankly plagued IT leaders and technology developers, and that is the human factor. You know, the human factor is the primary point of attack for cyber criminals as they look to achieve their goals of getting at that sensitive corporate information. I mean, we are the weakest link. You know, it's just built into our DNA that when we seek to address a problem, we often look for the most convenient solution. It's the reason why 23 million account holders use one, two, three, four, five, six as their password. I mean, and this was in 2019. I mean, this is incredible. You know, and as mentioned before, why, 50% of the people use the same passwords for both work and personal accounts. It's just easier. But as phishing attacks rise globally, it's essential that businesses educate their remote staff on social engineering and the importance of extending best security practices outside of the office. So a couple of questions we have to ask ourselves. Can your organization's current infrastructure support the staff required to work remotely? Does the staff have the necessary tools to work remotely? And again, are the current security measures in place enough to ensure that the right people have access to the business resources and data that they need? So these are just some of the numerous issues that had to be addressed immediately. While many organizations already supported a large remote workforce, there are many out there that just are not adequately prepared for this challenge. So let's take a quick review of the current authentication solutions in the market today. 
you know, passwords have been around for decades. And I'm sure most of us can agree they were sufficient when they were invented. Then there's password managers and password managers have become increasing, increasingly popular as they're convenient and they are cost effective. While a password manager secures passwords in a vault, it still does require the need for a single password, which is still a shared secret. Password managers have been hacked and once hacked, all the passwords are compromised. So today, password managers can be strengthened by adding additional, an additional form factor in the authentication process. For example, adding a, a FIDO hardware authenticator device. Then there's single sign-on solutions or SSO. SSO reduces the number of passwords required by combining several different application login screens into one. It, but SSO simplifies password management within the organization, however, if the credential is compromised, it allows access to all the secure applications. And once again, adding a FIDO hardware authenticator can add that extra layer of security. Then there's MFA or multi-factor authentication. And that requires two or more verification factors to gain access, you know, thus ensuring the authentication process remains secure. The more factors you add to your authentication process, the more secure your data becomes. Now I know that is an obvious statement, you know, but using passwords in your authentication process can be completely removed by adding another factor such as SMS or, or text message. So while budgets do play a huge role in the adoption of new technology into the organization, it's more important to look at the overall costs, either perceived or real, to your organization should a data breach occur. So authentication is key to securing the remote workforce. You know, as I pointed out in the beginning of this presentation, keeping remote employees connected to the services and information they need is paramount to keeping the businesses operational. But before anyone can access the sensitive information, a first crucial step must be taken and that is validating the user's identity by asking, are you really you? And this is essential in securing the remote workforce. And this is where strong authentication comes into play. The most widely adopted method that companies use to verify the user is multi-factor authentication. Verification and authentication factors come in many different forms. There's OTP or one-time you know, one password, smart cards, biometrics, PIN, SMS, text messages, tokens, and yes, even passwords. While multi-factor authentication is often referred to as strong authentication, there are ways to ensure that you're enabling the strongest methods. Now, as surprising as, as this may be, there is no magic formula or algorithm that will determine whether one method is better than the other or one is twice as strong as the other. However, we do have some guidance. The National Institute of Security and Technology, or NIST, really outlines three assurance uh, authentication assurance levels. Level one is a single factor authentication and no matter if it's a password or a cryptographic hardware device. Level two is any multi-factor authentication with both knowledge and possession factors. So something you know, something you have. The possession factor should use a cryptographic technique of some sort and it can be a software solution so uh, a smartphone app, for example. The third is level three, the highest is also multi-factor, but now only a cryptographic hardware authenticator is allowed as proof of possession. So apart from these several types, NIST also distinguishes between software and hardware authenticators, as well as cryptographic and non-cryptographic protocols. So let's look at using FIDO as an authenticating factor. I mean, I guess if selecting the auth an authentication method was based solely on the strongest form of authentication, the choice would be very easy to narrow down for IT leaders. However, the reality of the situation is that the cost of the technology has a huge influence. Organizations need to look at how the solution will scale within the business. And let's not forget about that human factor we talked about. We know that if the user experience is not convenient, users will actively seek to circumvent the security practices and ultimately flood the help desk with calls or worse, create a breach. Now we can see why the FIDO Alliance's open standards are quickly being adopted into security practices. You know, as we know, the FIDO Alliance's mission is focused on authentication standards to help reduce the world's reliance on passwords. I mean, their core ideas for driving FIDO are threefold. 
ease of use, privacy and security, and standardization. I mean, their, their tagline says it all, simple, strong authentication. So incorporating the FIDO open standards into your authentication process provides your organization with a, a strong solution that does four things. It offers NIST's highest level of assurance, level three. It's scalable and it's easily deployed. It's simple to use and it is cost effective compared to most other authentication form factors. Now, Identiv has been helping organizations for over 30 years to secure their digital identities, you know, manufacturing smart cards and smart card readers and tokens and, and just being a leading supplier in the, the DOD CAC PIV program, Identiv, we see the benefits that the future of the FIDO open standards enable. And we have incorporated those into our, our latest product offerings. In 2019, IBM Security stated that on average, data breaches cost $4 million per company in the United States. And this is estimated to grow to 9 million plus in 2021. Final cost per incident is affected by factors um, on how well the company was prepared and how quickly did they respond to the breach. But we know this as customers become less accepting of security failures, a data breach creates customer turnover. This is a fact and FIDO can help. You know, with the introduction of the GDPR and many more legislations that are just appearing across the globe, compliance has become an essential part of the cost of the breach. And the United States alone has 52 different state privacy laws and the need to hire and outsource security experts is expensive. And companies that are not willing to pay for their expertise suffer the regulatory fines. I mean, this can devastate a company. FIDO can help. So building off our extensive history as a tr trusted global manufacturer of identity devices and credentials, Identiv has expanded its extensive portfolio to include what we're calling the FIDO2 NFC security key. You know, again, having been part of the US federal government's CAC PIV program since the inception, Identiv understands the importance of high assurance, strong authentication, and the critical role that the public key cryptography plays in the security space. So let me just run down a few uh, features of FIDO and, and benefits, and then, and then I'll wrap up. You know, the FIDO2 security keys enable strong passwordless authentication through multiple protocols, FIDO U2F, FIDO2, PIV, OTP, the FIDO key delivers the highest assurance level, level three, using strong authentication and public key cryptography. The keys stay on the device. There are no server side secrets to steal. There's no traceability between services or accounts. FIDO keys protect against phishing attacks and man in the middle attacks. FIDO keys typically come in two models. There's one for enterprise and consumers and there's another one for government agencies or regulated agencies that would require a FIPS certification. The keys would work on almost all computers today as they come in uh, USB type A and USB type C. And in the case of the Identiv uh, FIDO keys, we also support contactless NFC connectivity. And our keys are made right here in the United States. As a global manufacturer, we are always trying to leverage our experience to provide a robust solution at an affordable price. And we think we've done that. So in, in closing, millions of people across the globe trust Identiv to help protect their digital identities. And with our partnership in the FIDO Alliance and our commitment to innovation and excellence, we expect this trend to grow for many more years to come. I mean, FIDO has become part of our family. You know, I invite each of you to reach out to our businesses and engineering teams with any questions that you may have or to request samples. You can also visit our website at identity.com for more information. And I truly hope you uh, enjoyed this presentation and thought it was informative. And I would like to personally thank you for your time. I look forward to addressing any questions you may have in the live Q&A to follow. Thank you.